guys, it is Blair and I'm going to be doing uh, the video on uh, Book Chat which is uh, kind of hosted by, or it is hosted by, <laughs> Misty at the Book Rat and her topic this month is classics and I thought that even though I haven't read any classics I would like to talk about them because it's, a, it's an interesting topic for me and my brain. So I thought I would show you first of the books that I have that I categorize as being classics to me um, for different reasons both because I've been told that they're classics and because uh, they've been recommended to me as classics so the first one I have to show you is um, uh, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and I think this is what well, this is the reason this book is a reason why I decided that I was going to start getting into classics because I went shopping and I saw this book and it's just so beautiful and it reminded me of my teenage years when I wanted to read this book and I started reading it I was really interested and got into it then I had to take it back to the library so I never got to finish it but it was that I was very very interested in different time periods when I was younger. I used to love reading Regency novels, um, different medieval novels, I used to love reading novels set in different places. Um, I read a lot of historical novels when I was younger and so when I became a teenager, like older teenager, I didn't read as much and my reading changed. I um, I was still reading a, a fair amount, but I was leaning towards adult books because I wanted to read adult books. I wanted to, you know, discover chick lit and, you know, mystery, mystery and crime and things like that. So I read a lot of those books when I was a teenager and I sort of pushed my love for things like Camelot and just the English time era out of my head. and. It isn't really until recently that I, ha uh, after reading, uh, why, why I'm reading a book at the moment, I just fell in love with it again and I just really want, I crave that experience. I crave going back into my childhood and really getting the chance to explore these books as an adult. And so yeah, so I have Wuthering Heights, I have The Hobbit, which a lot of people say is a classic and I think it is a classic to me because that's the way I feel about it. It is one of those books that I think is going to be timeless. So that is my copy of The Hobbit. H.P. Lovecraft and I think most people would agree that he is probably the king of horror. I haven't read any of his works but I know a lot of people agree that he's the king of horror so as well as Stephen King and things like that. But um, for me this is this is it's 20th century, but for me that kind of feels like classic to me because I haven't read it yet and it is fairly old um, from what I know. may not be, but for me that that feels classic. Then you get on to things like The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is one of those stories I have known about since I was a child. I was very deeply fascinated with the um, this story. I don't, I still don't know a great deal about it, but it's stuck in my head. I remember, I think my grandfather or grandmother told me about the story, of, the strange story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And then I went home and told my parents and I got in a lot of trouble because I started talking a lot of crap. So, um, but yeah, I've never read the book. And this is such a small book. It's surprising that I've never read it. Um, and uh, this book, has decent size font so I would really just love to get into it. I would like to collect these Col um, Collins classics but I picked them up at a very cheap store called Aldi that we have here. I'm not sure wherever places they have it in the world but I think I only paid two or something for them. But this is one of the books that I would really like to read. Same with um, Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. Um, the Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger and I actually read or started reading this when I was a teenager and I think being that kind of person, like being not the person that Holden is but like being a teenager not reading much classics um, I'll go into the detail a bit later but I kind of stopped reading it um, for a couple of reasons 
But I could understand it. I could totally understand it. Uh, it was when people started saying that it was all a lie and things like that. I just got confused. And I was like, look, can you not interrupt my reading brain? It's hard enough as it is. Um, so I put that one down. But as many times as I have tried to get rid of this, and I honestly, I've been through periods of time where I thought, okay, I need to get rid of my classics because I'm never going to read them. I just, I can't. There is something about this book that in a certain amount of time or whenever I'm ready to read it, I'm going to read it and I'm going to find something from it that I'm meant to learn about. So that's my belief anyway. Oops, sorry guys. And then you get these beautiful, cute little, um, like, I think they're penguin. Yeah, penguin books, which I would love to get more of these too. I only paid five dollars for this. But this is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And I remember when I was a child and they... The book that I had was like a really big hardback book and it was from the library and it had that plastic cover on it and it had pictures and I love that. I love sitting down in the afternoons and just escaping to these worlds with these beautiful creatures and I had like this fascination with the mice when I was younger. I just had to read anything that had mice in it, um, much to my mother's distaste. But I just remember that I was in love with these books. I was in love with the time period and things like that. And I mean, I cannot wait to read this. I cannot wait to read these. Um, and it's a classic. It is truly a classic. And for me, like, I can't wait to show my kids these books. I cannot wait for them to read them and explore them because they're just a fundamental part of my childhood. Obviously, and not, not a lot of the other books like um, Jane Austen and things like that because I haven't read those yet. But things like Wind in the Willows and a couple of other books, um, I do, I remember, I cannot remember the name, but my grandfather, he gave me this book that was from the 1940s. And it was just this beautiful, beautiful book. And it had pictures, and it was about adventure and mystery and children, and it was just brilliant. And I just wish I had I still had it because I would love to give it to my kids. And then you get things like this, which I haven't read either, and I haven't read the original either, so... Um, and the Meomorphosis, which I believe is when a guy wakes up and he is changed into an adorable kitten. And whenever I look at this one, like, whenever I look at this cover, I laugh, because it just it's just so weird and stupid, but I love reading things like that. I like reading uh, retellings of classics. Like, I have read some in the past. Um, obviously, it's not just a new thing where people write retellings of classics. I just can't... I, I didn't keep this when I was young. I can't remember the books back then. It's only in, like, the past couple of years where I've actually had a record and reviewed my books that I remember which ones I've read. But this is one of the books that I cannot wait to read. And I like retellings. I think, it, I think it's... Um, penny. I think it's an important way to remember these books and also I think it inspires a lot of people to try the books especially if you enjoy it retelling I know that I enjoyed the retellings I've read of Pride and Prejudice so much that I actually really want to read the original and I had no intentions really of reading it because I was so scared which brings me to the topic that uh, Misty was chatting about which is classics and how you feel about them which uh, Misty is talking about which is classics so basically what she talked about in her video was, uh, I think, what two people, what, what the two categories that people kind of lump classics in. Uh, she talked about the highbrow literary um, kind of classics, or the way that they are uh, pushed in front of you, and how they they often leave a bad taste in people's mouths because these are things that we've been forced to read in school, or you know, when you're a teenager, a lot of people. You know, there's that peer pressure and there's that stigma behind people who read and that they are, you know, geeky and nerdy and stupid and things like that. And I know that I, I beat past that. I look past that because I was, I was in PE reading. Like, I didn't like physical education or anything like that. I was the kind of girl who didn't give a shit when anyone thought. And I bought book bags or books to school. But there is a lot of people out there who just who are richly in love with these classics and they read them and they, they just they just explore the different worlds and they love them so much and you know they try and share that with people in a high school setting 
I just don't think it's the right place. I mean, it is the right place to learn about these things because I think it's a great way to be introduced to these things and, and there are people out there who do love them. But I think the high school setting is a, is a really poor place to learn about these things. And this is from my experience because when I was in high school, um, I was in love with these books. I was, I, I've read, like, I haven't read all of it, but I read To Kill a Mockingbird, some of it, and I really enjoyed it. But there was no place for me to talk about it because, you know, English came around and not many people wanted to talk about the book. Not many people liked it. You know, it was, oh, we have to do this. And that kind of ruined my experience. And when I grew older, um, a lot of the people that my partner hangs around, he's he hangs around a lot of university students, and I didn't go to university. I pretty much was one of those people who had to leave school school early, and I did try and study, and I did try and get myself out of the life that I was put in. But at the same time, I didn't have that place to talk about books, and and I felt stupid because all my fr all my partner's friends have talked about all these wonderful classics and things like that and I felt so out of place and then this I kind of grew this stigma around myself this wall that yes like these books are out there but there's only a certain person like type of people who can read them and that's intellectual people and I didn't see myself as being an intellectual and so that kind of left uh, that, that horrible taste in my mouth that these books weren't for me I'm not. I'm not smart enough to read these books. I. I'm not in the right crowds to read these books. And I'm not the only one who feels this way. I know that there's, a, there's thousands of people out in the world that have probably felt this way once before. But when I started reading the retellings and remembering how much I love these books and loved the errors that they're in and the history and the beauty of it, I just started rem remembering how timeless they are. This is something that Misty talked about, about the books being timeless. They are, no matter how, like these are s decades old books, you know, and century old books that are just so relevant to today. And I didn't realise that. I, and I know it's slow, but I thought that by reading these books, I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't be able to go back in time. I wouldn't understand what that time period was like. I couldn't put myself in those shoes, but when I read um, Pride and Prejudice, especially, well I haven't read the book, but when I read the retellings, um, I soon discovered that it's still relevant, you know, the, the, the whole rich and the poor, the, the judgmentalness of everyone, um, t opposites attracting, that romance, it's still relevant today. Uh, one of the things that I'm reading about now in uh, Mr. Shakespeare's Bastard is that back in those days when you slept around you were pretty much like you could fuck off <laughs> you were not allowed anywhere near those people you were a disgrace and nowadays uh, it's just interesting to look at it and see that that is still kind of relevant in, in d different situations but I also like that when you read classics you see how the world was how it is today and how it is some things are relevant to today but you also see how much the world has changed and you can't see that just by talking about like decades ago you have to be able to read it and you have to be able to explore it in books and you can't do that unless you read books that are written in those time periods and explore that I mean yes you can read it about people who are writing about those periods in modern day times but I think it's completely different it's, it's a completely different experience when you're reading it about um, books that are set back way then and that are written by those people because they have some of that experience. They know that time period. So I think in that way classics can be one, they can be a gift really because I just think it's brilliant. I do. I am starting to find myself wanting to just read all of them, anything I can find my hands on. And look, I'm very intimidated about reading William Shakespeare or any of his plays or anything like that. I have read little brief snippets of, thi of um, some of his plays in books and things like that. My brain does not register what they mean. But I know that if I give it a try, at least I've given it a try, at least I've explored that world, at least I've, I, 
I've tried something new and I think that's the thing a lot of people don't want to try it because there is that stigma it is it's hard to read sometimes it's not what you're used to but I think honestly if you can at least just give it a try you don't have to like it you don't have to like it at all but I think by reading classics you might find something within yourself or something within your reading like reading world that you might thoroughly enjoy and that might open doors for you to other historical novels or just different aspects of the novels that you like or would like to explore you know history things like that you might become interested in the wars or you might become interested in how like royalty acts and the world of royal royalty and I think that it's it's that that point is why people read those classics and that's why I want to read those classics so uh, do I have any favorites or least favorites uh, not yet <laughs> because I really want to just go back through everything and start afresh um, so at the moment I, I'm kind of because I have been reading a lot of Pride and Prejudice things this month I do say I love that story I re I'm watching the BBC series at the moment and I really like that and so right now Pride and Prejudice is one of those favorites I guess because it's a, it's a starting point for me and I can't wait to read the book uh, and I'm still scared even after reading after being like after reading the retellings I still feel like I'm going to be so stupid and not be able to understand anything they're saying but it's just one of those things that I, I really would love to do and I'd love to share my thoughts because there's so many people out there and this is why I love the book community because I don't feel trapped I don't feel like I'm in a high school setting I feel like once I read that book there are so many people out there that I can talk to and share that experience whether I hate it or love it and that is why I wanted to make this video because I might not have read a lot of classics I might not be in par with a lot of people's reading styles or the books that they have read but I know at least at the end of the day I have a home here and I have I have thoughts I, I can share them with you guys so I guess that's my take on classics I hope that it made sense I tend to get a little bit rambly but uh, so uh, hopefully this video will mesh together because there were a few parts when I was making this video that I had to stop it because of phone and companion and things like that. So, yeah. so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this and let me know your uh, feedback and comments and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.